appreciate you presence and uh, so many that have worked so hard for issues that matter and that count. And we're going to talk a lot about that as we go throughout today. My first thing up is I need to excuse me for not getting up and down off the platform. I've got a lot of things to introduce and, and move throughout today, so I'm going to stand here as quickly as I can to facilitate uh, things happening smoothly this morning. But at an event like this, I think the most important thing for us to begin with is the invitation for the Holy Spirit to come and be present with us, for God to be here. And uh, so on that note, I'm going to ask a brother from, uh, from the Catholic, uh, from CCJP, George Mangaba, if he would step up and, and lead us in an opening prayer this morning as, uh, as we begin today. Thank you so much, George. Shall we pray? Um, we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for all your gifts. We praise and thank you for you know, all the brothers and sisters here present from different organizations as we gather to commemorate the five years of disappearance of the Titan Zaman. We, Lord, beseech you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit and be with us as we commemorate this special day. Uh, Lord, as we, in these times where we are preparing for Lord, Easter, where we observe your son's suffering, your son's torture, your son's death on the cross, um, we remember all the other families where their uh, members have suffered the same fate as the Titan. But you, Lord, somehow in your own way may uh, be with them, we really commend them uh, into your care and love uh, different people across the land and breadth of our country who have been abducted and their families seek closure and uh, their families suffer every day as they uh, seek answers. Um, we trust and commend these families into your care. We, remit, we want to remember in a special way and Shifra, Zamara, and the family and who will be gathered here today that you show them love, you show them your care. And Lord, we also commend this day um, as we commemorate, as we are going to hear different um, uh, contributions from different people, from different organizations, that this will um, give us courage, to give us hope, and um, to stand and to fight for justice and peace. We make these prayers and other prayers in our hearts to Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good, good. A couple of house cleaning things right off the bat. Um, if I could ask you, I know everybody has at least one of these, and if you're really important, you have more than one of them on your person. Uh, most of them, in fact, not most of them, all of them are equipped with this amazing feature that allows events like this to happen without interruption called a silent mode. And so wherever your device is, please get it out. Please find the silent mode. Please make sure that you have it turned.
uncertainty and to the questions uh, that remain, particularly around uh, around. So, uh, as we gather today, as we as you hear from different speakers, you're going to uh, get the privilege of uh, hearing from many in our community and that that are leading on this area. There's so many of you in the room. So, what I would like to do. Just acknowledge that are present, OAUS, uh, 263 chat, the ZDD, the Marble Divine Destiny, Z-A-D-R, sorry, Z-A-D-H-R, uh, CSU, NGO Forum, CCJP, uh, Renewal Fellowship, that's me, um, WLSA, HR, Z O Y I P, uh, New Ziana, U Z L R F, M D C, and Z P P. That's got to be almost everybody in the room. So, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for taking the time uh, to, to invest in something that I think is, uh, is important, as I've said, for us to remember. And so, uh, as we move forward, uh, I'd like to invite uh, our, our first uh, speaker, as it were, this morning to uh, be ready to step up. Let me tell you a little bit about this. Director of the ZPP, Zimbabwe Peace Project, Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum. She was a journalist with, uh, our, that was her training, and, uh, and from what I understand, she was a news anchor on ZBC. So uh, we're excited to have Justina uh, Mokoko with us today. But before she comes, I want to tell you a few more things about her. In March 2010, Justina Mokoko was one of 10 human rights defenders uh, honored in the U.S. State Department's International Women of Courage with an award uh, with that name to women who have shown exceptional courage and leadership in advancing women's rights. She was also selected to serve as the 2010 Fellow uh, with the Oak Institute for Study of International Human Rights at Colby College. So without further ado, if you wouldn't mind putting your hands together and uh, giving her a big hand, Justina.
The barber shop he visited was in his hood in Glenview, as the young people would say. And it's clear that someone somewhere does have information on the whereabouts of the car. If you could not do it for anyone else, please do it for his minor children, Nenyasha and Nokuten, his wife Shifra, his parents and the rest of the family. One of their own was forcibly removed from them and day in and day out. They are not sure whether to continue hoping for his return or dread the worst, but either way, I think it will be important information. Our constitution, which Zimbabwe voted for on March 16, 2013, in a referendum, guarantees the security of person in Section 52. In case this right was flagrantly violated, and five years later, no one can account for it. It is the responsibility of the state to ensure that its citizens are free from harm, and also to ensure To the family, as members of civil society, we will continue to stand firm with you in our demand for answers. Your pain is shared, and we shall not relent on this issue. And we pray that it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but those who did this will be made to account. Once again, I would like to thank you all for attending this memorial and would also like to implore every one of you to remain steadfast and work collectively in making this nation great again. I think looking at the gaps in the room, I'm not sure if after five years we have already recorded. I actually thought that this room was going to be overflowing, but um, I pray and hope that people are going to be coming in. And uh, I think I would also want to make a plea that uh, Shefra is looking after my children. And uh, I think the, the ask that I have is we are all away in terms of the hard cash economic environment that we are surviving in Zimbabwe. Even for people who are going to work, who have got a great meal, they can hardly make ends meet. So you can imagine someone who is on her own, without her husband, with two minor children who are going to school. If we can help, I ask that we help shift her to be able to look after the children, um, as she is the only uh, parent that they are looking after. <laughs> continue to live in a world where we need hope, where we need joy, where we need peace, where we need those things. And we're praying that as a support to you, Shifra, today, that we can afford you some of that from us. The Bible tells us in John chapter 10, one of my favorite passages of scripture is when Jesus says, he says, the enemy was great news, first of all, that he doesn't come unless he's going to do something bad. That's right. He only comes if he's going to rob, kill, and destroy. And we are experiencing, we're remembering the fact that that is, is part of our life. And it's a part of why we're here today, because the enemy comes to do these things. But Jesus then followed it up and he said, I've come that you might have life. And that you might have it in its fullness, in its abundance. And when I read that, that you might have life more than abundantly, 
It doesn't mean just enough for me. It doesn't mean that life, I have enough for me to survive. And Justina, Justina, this is exactly what you were talking about. It's not enough for us to have just enough for us to get by. Enough hope, enough peace, enough joy to make it through one more day in Zimbabwe. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's right. And when he said more abundantly, we get the image of what is on the inside, what we have. Because there's more than enough, it's like, uh, it's like when you get up in the morning and you pour your first cup of tea and you're still a little bit sleepy and you're, you're not watching close enough to what happens and you pour a little longer than the cup can contain. You know what I'm talking about? And it begins to overflow over the top and it begins to spill onto the countertop around. That's what Jesus is talking about, is that the life that's inside of us, there's enough of it, not just just to fill us, but to overflow to the world around us. So that when people come into your presence, when people come and see you, there's a little bit extra peace. You ever been around somebody when you, you're in their presence and you walk away and you're like, wow, I just felt so peaceful when I was with them. Bishop Magaya is one of these people. You can be in his presence and feel the overflow. There's, there's joy in excess. I've got enough for me today, I've got enough for my family, and I hope today, she for that and for your children, that I have enough to maybe spill over a little bit for you and let you know that God loves you and He's watching over you and He cares for you. And that there's a community that loves you. And so on that note, I've been asked to introduce our uh, our next contributor to the program this morning, and this is uh, Pastor Tari Muchibaiwa. Was that good? If you will step up for us, she's going to lead us in a worship uh, or in a hymn this morning. And, uh, and as we do that, I want you to think about that. As, as you get into this, this song, I want you to think about the fact that there's an abundance that can bubble up from the inside and overflow to the world around us. So for those of you that are comfortable doing this, I'm going to ask you to stand with us this morning so you don't uh, fall asleep in your chair. If you don't want to stand, you don't have to. This is not a requirement. You're welcome to sit. <laughs>
Jesus. Let's just worship God as we surrender to the one who has all the answers, to the one who is able, to the one who is able to comfort, to the one who is able. Let's just surrender just a moment. Father, I want to thank you. Father, I want to thank you. Some people loved him for that. At the, end of his, at the end of his time, it cost him because some people hated him for the fact that he exposed what was in their hearts. And, uh, and there's always that challenge in, in an event like this where we're calling for light and for hope and for the future generations to be able to stand up and speak when the time comes without fear, without intimidation, to be able to be bold in, in calling for what they believe should be good governance and, and whatever else it might be, justice. And, uh, and so there's, there's that hope, that light that comes, but there's always those that oppose light. But what we want to do today is we want to invite the family 
uh, of Itai to, to come and we're going to light some candles. We have five of them uh, lined up here on the stage. Obviously one representing each year that we've been waiting for some answers. And I think what I've been asked to, to maybe mention today is this is the last time we want to light another candle. That the time has come to say no more. We don't want to get to next year and do a sixth candle. This is it. Five, we're remembering a life. We're remembering a life that was lived in, with passion and, and with what the calling that God had given him. And, uh, and so we, we light these candles in honor of that. But we also are saying this is the last time we want to add any more candles to this symbolic event of calling for light to come in a situation where up until now there's been darkness. There's been a lack of exposure of what's happened. And so, uh, Sister Tari, would you mind, could I ask you to come back? Uh, this isn't in the program, we're just going to add lip here a minute. But as the family does this, I'm going to ask you to lead us in, in another song. Uh, Shifra, if I could ask you and the girls if you wouldn't mind coming and, and lighting the, the candles for us. And as they do that, let's just sing something along with them to let them know that we are here to support them and to love them as they go through this. Accounted for. I think we continue demanding answers just like everyone is saying. 
So I continue to pay him the credit. I know he died uh, from 2002, I think, when we joined to work together as journalists uh, at the Standard Newspaper. And at that time, uh, he joined us. I think he was a sports reporter while so working on, uh, on the sports desk. And uh, what we learned with the time was he was humble. And at that time, when I say he was not referring to the time that we went together, it has been quite a long time, since 2002. But uh, his versatile, uh, he switched on from writing, from writing sports news to writing news, um, news articles. Uh, this led him to then even be transferred to join the Zimbabwe Independent, because he was owned by Alpha Media Audience, which was more of a serious piece of newspaper. So that's why I'm speaking about times that he was first at our mm -hmm. um, uh, Later on, uh, as we grow up, there were some issues that we used to do as boys um, and discuss why they uh, and uh, you used to we find ourselves working together for this online news agents. I won't mention it, but uh, with this story, we know that's not independent. The story about uh, the commandeering of the Yes, in Babu, yes, I think he did a very good story about that. Yes, we moved on uh, with the Thai interacting. The, the standard, we used to call me Sekoro, and I used to call him Sekoro. We don't have a relationship here with Kama, Sekoro, but we, we ended up relating to the extent that he called me Sekoro, and we called him Sekoro. And we related so well that time, the Thai, Muna Ifarilam, Shokuramari, Muna Ishkamari, and we like to so, the extent that we used to play social soccer together after um, our engagements in the news. But I moved on to, to say, he then moved to be a publisher. I think he was a bit frustrated with the issue of the news. He formed this company, Trinity uh, Media, which won the news letters, which was quite um, um, detailed in terms of investigations, we all know what, 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 what was producing. As someone who liked um, activism, he moved much more, he became much more pronounced into activism. He was part of the team that formed the National Media Alliance in Nya. Uh, I have seen colleagues here, he is a friend of many colleagues, and we thank your colleagues for keeping on supporting women and family. Uh, in 2014, um, should be October, I think he moved the gear up you know, with our engagements, which used to do to chat uh, in a social media inquiry. He petitioned the former president Robert Mugabe, asking him to step down, down to pave way for a national transitional um, administration. So we are looking at the, the way the work that guy was doing then and what he stood for. I think we can all identify today. These are issues that still concerns us up to now, isn't it? If we look at the issues that happened in November 2017, um, there may be issues with that to say, okay, this is happening in this manner, this way. But the time was a church beer, isn't it? He started speaking about these issues many years ago, 2014, uh, even beyond, but he was much more pronounced in 2014. 2014 October, he died, starts his sitting protest in Bafka in I have one or two colleagues who used to work together, standard, who called me, Bafka Tanga, and say, something like this, he died still uh, uh, well after. So, that's because the Randa South Banyan Saku Master in Kwa Swastika, Vatiru Kona Nasi, right? We had foresight, we had already started engaging long back, realizing only that things may turn out not to be well. But that was the time. 2014, like I said, just said in October, starting the city in protest there with Yonadano, I see Charles here, so I just called him there with those two pi after the industry. And for doing that, they get um, uh, rewarded. How were they rewarded? We all know how they were rewarded. Uh, being taken to another central police station, being assaulted, 
had so many, so many times been detained at others. I know some organizations here, some of them listed here, some of them listed. We very day support uh, running around the lawyers, uh, these uh, social support uh, services offered to type them doctors, isn't it? So, Angari uh, Munai Chengete, but he never, away from this, he never, I know about how we are in the country. In November 2014, in November, he posed for a public protest in Harare, which was uh, disrupted as always. And those things are there documented, and we all know who was doing it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that uh, we are now for the first five years we've been asking answers what may have happened, but uh, we all know who was uh, attacking the guy. We all know who was disrupting this thing. Isn't it? So, can someone come from? Uh, which differ from those who all know the common people is the common people are not listening. Mm -hmm. So the, with our prayer, our call is for, for, for some action to be done, uh, for some remedy to be done for Nenyasha, for Nekitenda, for Shefa, see Patson, Bia Zamara, Sakuri Zamara, Wawane, Kanapapaini Kurwasha, Wawane Kurwasha, Sakuri Zamara. I won't take much of the time, but then later on, it I, uh, in 2015 January, that's honored is one of the seven uh, heroes by giraffe heroes in Zimbabwe. But I remember in our conversation, he said I contemplated declining, accepting the offer. In his own way, he says, uh, because the purpose for which I have been recognized has not yet been achieved. That was the time. I was not condemned with that honor. But I said, no, I wanted to take it down. And um, uh, he said, in fact, we have a lot of work to be done. And today, I think there's a lot of work to be done for Itai's colleagues, isn't it? There's a lot of work to be done for those who believe in uh, women rights, for those who believe in equality, for those who believe in democracy, uh, just rule of law. Um, that's it. I will end here with the, my last conversation with Itai. I think it was um, on 4 March 2015. He sent me an invitation. Media education, the National Education Alliance will stage a project today over Zessa's failure in the power shortages. Yeah? That was 2014. Where are we right now? 20, 2020. Mm -hmm. Zessa, you No. But I was it already seen, like said, well, let's start acting to push those with obligations to take care of good care of the asset citizens, to provide electricity. Right now, we don't have electricity. But I had already started saying, let's do something about this, isn't it? And today my response, um, I won't share it, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kumbu uh, At this point, what we'd like to do is we'd like to hear from the family. Uh, so we've set time aside for, uh, for the family to come and address the, the group this morning. So in no particular order, I think, as, as you guys feel uh, you want to. Feel free to come and share with us what's on your heart.
This is a moment uh, that we, we're opening up for you to, uh, to remember uh, and memorialize uh, what, what you'd like to and, and tell us a little bit about uh, your relationship, if that's the case, uh, with the ties. So if that, I could have the first representative come on up, feel free. Failure to account by state actors 
on the fate of the pro-democracy campaigner, who has been missing for five years now. The family of Itai Zamara has the right to know what happened to him to bring closure to his disappearance. The disappearance of Itai Zamara on 9 March 2015, for yet to be established motives, remains a mystery and raises questions on the security of persons in Zimbabwe, particularly those perceived to be critical of the government of the day. Zimbabwe's women rights will continue to assist the Zamara family in their quest to know what happened to Itai for justice to prevail. It appears the authorities have forgotten, but his disappearance continues. And for the state, it is now business as usual. Zimbabwe's women rights remembers the values that Itai stood for over the years and commitment he invested in the pursuit of freedom, democracy, justice, and peace in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe can only prosper when citizens feel protected by the government. Five years on after the disappearance of Itai, it is certain to note that while in March 2015, the High Court, through an order that was granted by Justice David Mangota, issued directives to authorities to investigate, establish his whereabouts, and update his family and lawyers. This order also stipulated time frames within which the updates should have been provided, and this should have been filed at the High Court by the law enforcement agency. But these updates have not been forthcoming as in accordance with the court order. There were a few updates that were given, but no further updates have been provided. <coughs> no meaningful progress has been made to get bringing into person the seriousness and sincerity of government in establishing what happens to time. Zimbabwe rights human rights condemns the lack of progress made in investigating the human rights violations highlighted by the abduction and enforced disappearance of Itai and punishing those responsible. Zimbabwe rights for human rights further holds government accountable for the disappearance of Itai as the government is a duty to protect its citizens, even if the government is not directly responsible for the violation. As an organization, we call on the government to take all necessary concrete and urgent steps to ascertain the whereabouts of Itai Zamara and to continually update the family on efforts being made to locate him. To fully investigate the circumstances surrounding the abduction and the full reasons of the abduction and ensure that those responsible for the forced disappearance are brought to account. We also call on the government to ratify and domesticate as well as fully implementing provisions of the United Nations Convention on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances and the United Nations Convention Against Torture, Other Cruel, Inhuman, Operating Treatment and Punishment, as well as the optional protocols to these human rights instruments. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you to the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights for their contributions and uh, I'm just going to ask the next uh, speakers if they'll come up and introduce themselves for me as I didn't have a, a list of who they are and uh, follow through with their answers. Thank you. Good morning. Uh,
Charles is my name and I'm here representing Occupy Africa Unit Square. Good morning. Good morning. Saibona. Mabukasi. We are here gathered in this remembering this icon of our generation, Captain Itai Zaman. I'm here today because of Itai Zaman. Not because I'm here remembering him or commemorating him as why some of you are here, but because he is the reason why I'm standing here. He is the reason why I became an activist in the first place. Uh, I knew Itai way back when he was still a journalist. He was using the office that I worked from, and that's where he was doing his journalism from. And the day that he wrote his uh, first petition, the one that he sent to the former president, uh, Robert Mugabe, asking him about the conditions that we have in the country. We were sitting in the office and I was asking you, Comrade, Chi Chai 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 leave the office, print this letter, go and hand it in. Personal with another colleague. There were just two of them. And that was on Friday, I remember. Saturday was a weekend. Sunday, a weekend. Come Monday, I went in Africa in the morning and I found him sitting on that blue bench alone with his arms on the bench. Comrade, and his question, he looked at me and smiled and said, why are you here? And I told him, I came looking for you because you said you are going to occupy Africa. The reason why I'm sitting here is because I was waiting for people like you. That's why you are here. Have a seat. And I sat. And that was day one of my indoctrination of becoming the activist. Every day, from that day onwards, we were always in Africa in this way. And two other comrades came and joined us. And he taught me how to play chess to while up time. If we were not running away from the police, we were playing chess. If we were not getting ourselves beaten, we were playing chess. If we were not whistling in town, we were playing chess. It was him. Now I'm a master at chess, thanks to this guy. <laughs> and then, Giraffe Rose. Well, that was because of him. We were sitting by Joanna City planning strategy. We always moved around town because he was like, the state is listening, the state is always after us. So we should not be at the same place. We should always move up. We went to join our city, got ourselves a place to sit, then we planned. Gentlemen, it, is, it has been two months now since I have submitted my petition and nothing has happened in government. So we now need to make a follow-up. Here is the plan. I need a team to go into parliament with a follow-up later to my petition and I can't go there myself because they will not allow me because my face is well known and you Murungu, referring to one of our comrades you can't go there because your name is your face is also recognized so we need someone who has been playing low key and then he looked at me I don't want to lie to you I was very scared because that was my first time of actually getting like into the peak of the action my glasses were shaking, I was shivering all over. And he told me, you're the perfect candidate, and this is your initiation comrade. So you are going to lead a team of five people. Go into parliament, get yourselves in, get into the public gallery, and throw my letters in, and make noise as much as humanly possible as you can. And that's what we did, and guess what? Oh, I got the beating of my life after that event. I was arrested, detained, whatever you want to call it, the whole day after the Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Mudenda, actually grabbed me and told the security to go, hey, deal with these people. Make sure that you deal with them, Nigga. And they took us to a security room in Parliament. A broomstick broke, that's what I remember. And then they used an electrical power cable for a laptop. And my back was, you couldn't even look at it from that day. And then we were transferred to Central, disappeared the whole day. I didn't know that Central had a basement office. That's where we went, room number 15. Only, I still remember that day. On a desk. And we were given physical lessons and counseling. 
indoctrination and the ideology of ZANU PF on that particular day. Guns were put on the table, dismantled, mentored, bullets put, and they did what they do in movies. Like they put a bullet and then they say, uh, we're going to ask you a question and you're going to answer. If you don't, well, we'll pull the trigger. You can imagine. This was my first time and I have never been beaten the way that I was now being beaten. And we were taking turns to beat each other. Imagine. So I take one of my comrades, I put him on the desk, and then I take the shampoo. And then if I beat him lightly, the guy will say, okay, you are feeling sorry for your comrade. Away, you, next. And so on and so on until 12 midnight. We came out and he was there waiting for us. What a comrade, what a friend, what a true captain. He consoled us and told us, don't worry, comrades. This is part of this course that we are taking. Don't worry, everything will be fine. And from that day onwards, we never looked back. And yeah, five years now. I feel very sorry for the young kids. I still remember on a Monday morning when I get a, got a call from uh, my guru Shifra telling me that Bamin, Koma um, has been abducted You know, you start going through a lot of things in your mind. You don't know what is happening. You are never prepared for now what is happening. But what I want to tell you all is if I knew this was going to happen, if for me, this even before it had happened. Because I remember when he went out to form the organization Occupy Africa in its way, he was elected the chairman of the organization by virtue of him being the captain. But he declined that position and said, okay, we need to have two co-chairpersons. In the event that I'm not there, the other one should then continue without any problem to the organization moving forward. So to us, people who have been in civic society, it was strange because we were so used to, to have a uh, chairperson and vice chairperson, but he didn't want a vice chairperson. He specifically wanted two co-chairpersons with equal power and equal authority. So for us, it was like he knew that soon they were going to borrow him away from us and then forget to tell him, which is what they did. Yeah, the state is always out there and looking to make sure that uh, they keep us down, but we will not stop doing what the captain left us doing. And we will continue asking the question, where is the time? Bring back the time. Because we want him dead or alive. If he is dead and they have killed him, then they should just show us where they buried him or the bones or whatever it is. And for this so-called government, for them to actually issue a statement, uh, trying to protect their image because EU has said something regarding the time. For me, it leaves a lot to wonder. To exactly, you are not answering chief petition. You are busy going out through your mouthpiece, the chief liar, Nick Mangwana, talking about here yeah, your image and the police. When Itai was abducted, the car that took Itai, we got the registration. We followed up on that car and we got the person who bought the car from ZRP. He had the papers, he had everything to show that he was sold to the car. And we went to the police and gave them the information. And the names of the state operators that abducted this guy. But voila, nothing happened up to this day. And they stand there with a straight face and lie to our faces as if we were kids and tell us that ah, we are doing everything possible, possible investigations are going on. And yet they never opened the docket for this man. <coughs> What's your name? This so-called chief spokesperson of uh, the therapy goes online and says, we are appealing to the nation and the reward is being offered of 2,000 other teachers, anyone with information to help the therapy uh, find the whereabouts of this guy. Seriously. Seriously. And they expect us to believe that nonsense, that they are actually appealing for information. We all know that therapy is well known for it. Best investigators right. all in Africa. They have been all over in Africa doing a good job mm. and they are highly recommended. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the investigation of a state sponsored abduction of Ita Zamara, then they don't have resources, they don't have cars, they don't have information, they want the public to assist. And yet, if you commit a crime today, they won't be 24 hours before they come in. 
So we will not stop and we will not rest until we answer the question. Neither are we going to allow anyone to even talk to me about this guy in university because Kotila has set up a day with Zakati Gobe and Makaba Murmedia in April, the likes of Panaka Sukwere, Jonathan Moyo, and this Vanatina Gamu, these people who think they are now too holy and they want our sympathy and they now want our support. If they don't come to you know what happened to this man, then to us it is good, yes. As long as you must tell her what you teach her, you know what you are doing, then you should put it in the same way. And you could find the car of a car, eat him, and that. Now, as I must tell you, you know what you are doing, and then I, Sister Tiba, and I give you more than I just see as a formula to the other. Yet, you know what I am. I thank you so much. Mostly the organizers of this commemoration. I'll start by giving a background. As the Crisis in Zimbabwe Coalition, our call is mostly directed to the government of the day. And I want to remind colleagues that in 2016, a year after the first disappearance of our colleague Itai, uh, the then Vice President uh, Emerson Damutum Nangawa, who is now the President of the country, went to Geneva for the United Nations Universal uh, Periodical Review. And what he did there is that he promised the family of nations at that gathering that Zimbabwe as a state was going to pursue actively the search for Itai Zamara and as well provide regular updates. But as we gather here today, five years down the line, we are yet to be a testimony to any meaningful, active pursuance to this issue, or at least regular updates on the issue of his physical disappearance. So, we are worried, and this statement is actually directed to the government of the day. I'll start. Yesterday marked exactly five years since the disappearance of human rights activist Itai Zamara, who was abducted by alleged state security agents on March 9 from his Glenora suburb of Harare. Zamara, through his Occupy Africa Unit Square campaign, held demonstrations challenging President Robert Mugabe to step down arguing that the ZANPF leader had failed the nation of Zimbabwe through his rule. Before his abduction, Zamara faced the brutality of the Zimbabwe public police as the law enforcement agents tried to thwart his protest. Since Zamara's disappearance, the crisis in Zimbabwe coalition has noted with concern the inaction on the part of law enforcement agents, despite a high court directive for the government to commit resources towards the search for the missing Zamara and provide regular updates. The state's excuse has been that they do not have any leads over Zamara's whereabouts. 
The President's Zimbabwe Coalition remains skeptical of government's commitment to search for Tamar. There has not been any action on this case in the last two to three years. We all remain in darkness and there is no closure on the part of his family, friends and colleagues. Today, we stand in solidarity with his family, friends, colleagues and fellow activists as we continue to call for the government to provide the much needed answers. As the crisis in Zimbabwe coalition, we contend that it is obligatory upon authorities to abide by section 53, <coughs> subsection 3 of the country's constitution, which stipulates that every person has the right not to be treated in an unfair, discriminatory manner on such grounds as their political affiliation or opinion. CIZC urges the government of Zimbabwe to ensure they create safe spaces for activists and walk the talk as far as tolerance to divergent views and opinions is concerned. And above all, respect citizens' right to life despite political standing. I thank you. Do you have any other uh, civic society organizations that want to uh, share? Thank you. <clears throat> Morning, everyone. Morning. I'm sorry, Muriel Atama. I'm sorry, I'm organizer for this event. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm just tight, tight, Atama. My name is Corbett Masarao. I'm coming from Amalgamated Broad Church Union of Zimbabwe. We are here to commemorate the father of non-violent action in Zimbabwe. We are here to commemorate the continued disappearance of the comrade who taught all of us how to confront an evil regime with non-violent action. The government will continue to inspire us that nonviolent action is so powerful that even the most violent regime can tremble. We commemorate the disappearance of a man who, when he just sat down in Africa in the square, the regime of Robert Mugabe would tremble when he was just sitting down. With all the institutions of violence at the disposal of Robert Mugabe, you will tremble when Comrade inside Zamara was sitting in Africa in Square. At a personal level, I first met inside Zamara when he was the editor of the news leader, and there was a leader of Zimbabwe National Students Union. <coughs> then I know I had a page that was always reserved for me, which was always a phone call away when I was desperate to be in the newspaper. <laughs> And then we would hold interviews at Holiday Inn. Um, but he was more than a journalist. He, was, he became a brother and he would advise me on a, a lot of issues. Now at a later stage, when I was no longer a student leader, we became friends and started to co-create what we're calling community courts for accountability in Zimbabwe. Because of course, that initiative uh, didn't last long, uh, but he was the spokesperson of that initiative, wherein he continuously said, we want to have a platform where communities can summon leaders at any particular time and force them to account uh, with regard to service delivery. So he was the spokesperson and was part of the initiative. So really, he's one person who inspires me when I'm walking from Tari to Arad. I think what I think the time we have simply done the same. It inspires me uh, when you are taking a coffee into Mtuli's office. I think the time we simply have done the same because he's, for me he is the father of non-violent action. Now we all know that he continuously said Mugabe must step down 
which was a fate to end up in the military, the institutions of violence agreed to that particular fate, a particular idea at a later stage. And they also joined in the campaign to force Mugabe to step down. Mm -hmm. We credit him for, for being a person in that regard. But now, the most important thing is to ask ourselves is what did we do when he was taken away from us? I appreciate the work that was done by most of our colleagues. The lawyers, in particular, they did a lot to ensure, to try to force our government to account for our problem. But the rest of us simply hoped that he was going to come back. Some were even malicious to lie that the tie is now in Botswana. But five years on, the tie is still missing. We should really look ourselves in the mirror and really say to ourselves, have we done enough to try to force this government to bring back our COVID? And if we can't force the government of Amazon Munanga but to account for, for one, for one Itai Zaman, how are we going to force the same government to account when it comes to constitutionalism? When we can't force them to account for a whole person, are we going to be able to force them really to account with regard to our constitution? Are we going to be able to force them to account with our mineral resources? That is why we continue to so when the Thai went missing, we remain quiet and now billions are missing in the name of Commander Agriculture. Can we force them to account for three billion that was lost in Commander Agriculture? When we can't force them to account for a person. So really, this is really time for us. This is a day where we should seriously, seriously reflect uh, on the work that we are doing. That really, in as much as we are pushing other agendas, it's high time that we also internalize the entire straight in our programming. I want to say a day where every teacher in Zimbabwe will get to a class and say, before we begin any lesson, can we have a moment of silence for the man? I want to say a day where also the society leaders, when they gather and they are about to begin a program, they want to pray for the return of the man. I want to see when parliament, people are in parliament, Having a moment of silence for the time. This is the best that we can do at the moment because we failed to act when he was taken from us. But we can still do something so that we continue to pile pressure on the coolest government of Amazon Nagawa to account for the missing for our missing comrade. I salute the family uh, of the Taitama. The family has gone through a lot. They have suffered. Uh, we know as a people, we only meet you here in these particular events. Very few of us will come to your homes to see how you are coping with the missing of your loved ones. Uh, we hope to do better in the future and encourage each and every one of us to not only see the Thai's family in this particular gathering, but also walk through with them their life, what they are enjoying because of the sad realities that they are living with, the sad circumstances that they find themselves in. They still work that in time can be accounted for. But we cannot just sit back and walk. We have to act to ensure that we push our government to account. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for uh allowing us in to some of the life that you shared uh, with the time. And uh, we appreciate that. Is there anybody else before we move on with our program that uh, would like to share?
tie epitomized what we have seen throughout the history of Zimbabwe. When we saw Zabu and Zanu fighting each other in the ghettos of Arar, in the ghettos of Lawa, when we saw the history of Zimbabwe during the Bukura Wundi era, it was merely a fight for capital between the elites, and it was us, the young people, we had to fight, we had to die in those fights. What happened in Zimbabwe in 2002? What happened in Zimbabwe in 2008? The entire student is in who transmogrified himself in an idea. An idea that shifts the world. And now they did what they had to do in order to defend their capital. And we, comrades, have to do what we have to do. And that is to defend and protect the ideas that the child is now. We have to protect the ideal of a democratic Zimbabwe when all people are different to one. I have nothing much to say, but I say to retire the man, more comrade, more, more. Uh, I'd just like to, at this point, I've just been made aware that Itai's mother is here, and we'd just like to acknowledge her presence. Thank you, Amai, for being here with us today and, and we, uh, we stand with you um, as, we, as we look for answers. The other thing that I, I would like to invite you all to do is that uh, some postcards have been made available at the, uh, at the entrance. Uh, there's a little note uh, on the back uh, calling for a uh, more <coughs> substantive investigation into Itai's disappearance and a call for them to do something uh, further for that. We'd really appreciate it. It would help. Numbers matter when it comes to these sorts of things. And so it would really help us out if you could write a personal note on there, sign the back of that, leave it with the, the organizing committee here, and they will get these uh, to where they need to go in order for it to make a difference uh, for us. So if you could take the time uh, sometime during the program to, to do that for us. Uh, as we move on, I'd like to invite uh, our next speaker. He is uh, the chairperson of the Itai Zamara Trust, as well as the director of Zimbabwe Divine Destiny, one of the uh, organizing bodies for today, uh, Bishop Magaya. If you'll give him a hand as he comes and shares the word of God with us this morning. Even including what we are gathered here for, uh, commemorating the disappearance of Itai Zamana. I want to share with you from the Word of God this morning, just to exhort you, but also to speak into the situation on the basis of the authority of the Word of God invested upon the church. The Bible says some very important insights in the book of Psalm, chapter number 85, Kubaba Vesia 9, 10, and 11. This is where I will be speaking from very briefly. Mapsare, my chapter number 85, from verse number 9, 10, and 11. Now, I want you us to understand what you Mapisari Maaya and Chataura Nishawa point to a season where Israel looked forward to heaven. A season of peace. 
a season of prophetic bliss, a season of glorious destiny. And uh, because God wanted to prepare his people to understand um, what it is that is going to be important for them to reach that uh, season, God used King David to prophetically issue uh, these words that I'm going to be sharing with you from the book of uh, Psalms. Now, the Bible says in verse number 9, Surely salvation is near them that fear him. And his glory shall fill our land. Now, I want you to take note of that. that that's very important. Why? Surely his salvation, his salvation is near, is near to those that fear God. And I want to suggest that the salvation for Zimbabwe will be made a reality when Zimbabwe expresses utter fear for God. Now, when you fear God, you are not going to kill nobody. When you fear God, you are not going to make somebody disappear. The Bible says if you want economic salvation, if you want economic salvation, if you want uh, sunshine to remove, you need to fear the Lord. The Bible says surely His salvation is near those that fear Him. Do you understand, church? I am saying to the people of Zimbabwe today, our salvation for Zimbabwe is not so much in the economic blueprints. You have crafted so many, several economic blueprints. Governor eh? economic structural adjustment, chakadaro, chakadaro. Right now we're talking about transitional, blah, blah, blah. And saying our salvation will not come from uh, these economic blueprints unless the fear of the Lord is within us. In fact, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. The reason why we want the stupidity in our parliament, stupidity, lies, eh? lies in our executive now these guys are liars, pathological liars, right from the executive. The Bible says it is the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. Mr. President, sir, we want to urge you to fear God because he is the creator and he is the repository. He is the source of all wisdom. You want to transition this nation towards 23rd upper middle class economy, this will remain empty rhetoric unless you submit to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Now listen to me. It is very dangerous to submit to anybody who does not submit to someone. Who is the final authority? The Bible says, uh, I want to speak to men that are here. I will not answer you. 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 I Eh? You don't submit to anybody. If you have a nation, a leader, a president who sincerely do not, does not, does not submit to God, we, we are dead. We are dead. Praise the Lord. Now the Bible says, surely salvation, surely salvation is near. You want salvation to be near in Zimbabwe. You gotta serve God, you gotta love God, you gotta worship Him. You've got to express utter dependency on Him. Desperate, sick, 
for God desperately. Right? His glory will be in this land when we fear him. And when we fear him, we are not going to commit acts of corruption, acts of murder and violence. These are key vices yeah, that are prevalent in this nation. God says no. God says no. Soon rather than later. And I, I, I de decree this. Decree, decree this. Soon rather than later, God is going to manifest himself. Something cataclysmic will happen unless repentance happens. Hear you these words. God is not a son of man that he should lie. Yes. He is not man that he should re be repentant of his, of his words and his values. So verse number 10, what does it say? Verse number 10 then goes on to, you know, isolate and to identify values that should usher a nation in a, an era of a prophetic Please. Number one, the Bible talks about truth. It says truth and mercy have met together. What a just juxtaposition. So the first important thing for Zimbabwe as we journey towards economic prosperity, it is truth. Are we there? Now you guys, you talk about reconciliation. You talk about forgiveness. Who has sinned against who? Who has stolen my cattle? Who has, who has destroyed my homes? Who has burnt my homes? Who, who has disappeared? Billions said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this man? This, uh, the latest. Uh, lost, lost the car. We want the truth about that. Eh? Ah, you read and you can read. Number 156, 160, Munyazi corruption. Out of 180. Ah, Pushai for one and a tongue. Eh? Please come for me. What's on the beach? Papa, I'm going She's not fit enough to stand the trial. Was she fit enough to commit acts of corruption? <laughs> Stealing. What's up, what's up, I can assure you, corruption in Zimbabwe is right from the top. Prove it. Arrest perpetrators. Show forth that you are committed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I am saying today, I worship the God who knows. From the Chubut in the No, the young man has said it so well. This is a whole, a whole lot of one lamb and one bunch. People know where Ita Izamara is, and we want the truth about that. They know it. Makusa Edi Nyang, do that was his end. What happened with some Interpol award? Vauda. Pani Akatsika Manawechi Koro Pa Gelza Hayapa. Akatatwa in one week. Papa Lopana. Nyang, Jibs, the Ruma Purisa Edi. I can assure you, Makusa Edi Nua Chene Sakanabasika. But we act with political But it is say, and you will see signs and wonders. Yes. With regards to the disappearance of Itai Tamara. Tomorrow, remove your dirty hands from our place. Remove your dirty hands. If you want, God will deal with you. So, we want the truth around Itai Tamara. But secondly, you know, as we join towards prosperity, mercy is going to be very critical. And I want to assure, I want to assure the perpetrators of violence that once you repent, God will forgive you. I would 
will be the very first person. Eh? Ukatendo ga yo to 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 kuita ko conference ne we press conference yokuko asha kuva nokuti more yai vava tende uka vaibonzi sauro lava power evidence e the tower of the tides baranga kuti the port of Zimbabwe is gathering gerere e ama yenu ithu turi kama kuva msoro tsitsi dza Jehova so uruka kama msoro pako mercy truth and mercy will meet together so truth alone without mercy it will not be complete hey so there's going to be mercy there's going to be forgiveness but you see mercy and forgiveness will only come when there is truth man don't emphasize one thing over the other reconciliation what 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 was that with you Let's forgive each other. As who forgives who? We are sinned against you. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa 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 wanda kuna 2008. Yeah. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa wakwa wanda kuna 2008. Yeah. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa 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 wanda kuna 2008. Yeah. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa 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 wanda kuna 2008. Yeah. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa 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 wanda kuna 2008. Yeah. Tabura kutini daka konzeresa kurai wakwa 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 wanda kuna 2008. Uno disassociate ne upenyu waita kutara. Otaura umonde wake. Otaura kuti ndanda kapata tsamba yokuenda ku Jerusalem. Ndiche babu tabasika. Ndika pene wane chiete. Ndapigwa ne mahai priest mfumo yokunuraya. Mukona kuti ari kuto ari kutaura nezve mahai priest. Now show what you could do kunoreva kuti you expose what you did. You disassociate yourself from those perpetrators of violence. Right? And uh, the consequences, in most cases, deputy, those for whom you killed and those uh, um, um, with whom you killed will begin to disown you. But the church will own you. Did you say? Yeah, I've, I've often said to the president, President Mandaba, President Mandaba, uh, yeah, actually, I I look at the eight catch a chip on the board. Rationalize the transition. I don't look about all of a sudden from here to there. When we manage, manage, titles go. Now we're going to be. We're going to be going to the other side. Change the rule of law. We're going to go and put together to the president Mandaba. This is in public domain. Public domain. President Mnangagwa told, I almost said order to President Mnangagwa, you know, advised and exhorted President Mnangagwa. Could I want President Imin Shira Chisa in place cabinet? Right. No rationalization in the phone, what we want, you remarks, what we want. We put truth, then mercy. Thirdly, justice. Justice. Well, the nation will prosper on the basis of justice. Right? We need to, we need to witness in our nation non-selective application of the law. So, for example, if the deputy is arrested because he has announced the elections, suppose only two years, Tumbodara, Tumbodapa, two years ago, then the Wungwe, Wungwe, what's his first name? Um, um, uh, Josia Wungwe, should be given more years for dragging the name of the president and say, Munangaba shoots, so fought well, Munangaba shoots. That is what he said in May of 2018. And he is not arrested. He was not arrested. He's an OPF Zenot Youth Leader in 2016 says Zanopiev kills army is ours. Soldiers, police, they are ours. So fought well. And that young man has not been arrested. She must try our own business. Jokes that love. Are we together? We are saying justice is not a precarious man. 
So the law is not for one person. There's going to be fair adjudication where everybody is subservient. Praise the Lord. Now, when we do that, guys, now, put it when you come. Justice, you know, it is no function. When I got a wonder of the corruption in one month, and then you appear in 21 hours. So I'm angry with you. Whatever policy, I'm telling you if this fundamental Bible has values and the principles are not adhered to, you're not going to make it. And then finally, the Bible says justice will kiss you. Kiss. So you will not there. The, the first uh, pair, truth and mercy. So truth goes hand in hand with mercy. And then secondly, justice and peace. Now we will not pursue peace in isolation from justice. Yeah. This cannot be spoken one in isolation from the other. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So for us to realize this, let us be just. Justice and peace. If this start each other. Each other. And then finally, verse number 11, the Bible says, Truth springs from the earth. And then it says, Justice stoops or looks down from the earth. So, it's a farm, so quad, Maribanunza ends and is so, when you guys Zimbabwe, as we commemorate. Um, this disappearance, we plead with us all to be lovers of truth. Praise God. And I want just to conclude here appealing to the church. Those that are here and men of the church that are not here. Now, there is a very profound portion of scripture that is found in the book of Job, chapter number 29, verses 15 to 17. You remember when Job had gotten sick and his friends came to him, and so they were trying to, you know, to accuse him and say perhaps uh, you could have seen that there is God, you need to introspect, you need to re-look back into your life and see where you would have, you know, not done well. And then Job narrated his justice credentials. And I want to appeal to the church and say, we need to embrace as part of our, as part of our mandate, prophetic mandate, Job's, Job's manifesto. Job's manifesto is there in Job chapter number 29. Go read it at home for your, for your own nourishment and motivation and inspiration. Job number 29 verse 15 to 17, the Bible says as Job speaks, I was father to the fatherless. I was fit to the name. Right? I fed the hungry. I fought for justice. Job goes on to say, I searched out the matter, the case of those that I did not know. And ensured justice happened. He goes on to say, I broke the jaws of the thief, the jaws of the lion, and took out of its mouth that which it had stolen. This is Job. Now, I looked up for the tithes and my family. I knew none of them. And when I learned about the tithes and mother's disappearance, Looked up for them first, but on second, Shifra, Baba Namai went to their home, prayed with them, organized prayer meetings. They remember receiving a threatening phone call one of these days from a person who is 
incidentally a member of the clash. He's not so sharp. He thought I could not detect his voice. But he, he, he is, he is, he would be an informer. He, he wanted to be sympathetic to the system. And then he said to me, have you forgotten the tear gas in Glenora at the Nazarene church? Have you forgotten the arrest in Kadoma in 2006? Is Itai your relative? Was he a member of your church? Why are you that overzealous? Ah, and then he held the phone down. We don't stand for those that we know. We stand for those people that God has created in his image. And we are ready to fight for them. Praise God in the highest. I want us to rise up on our feet right now. Because I want us to pray and make a very clear declaration and claim. I want you to understand that once you release words from your mouth, those words will assume a life of their own. Your wish will be granted in the name of Jesus. We need to claim now. I, 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 I've, I've been praying this prayer. And I can even pray this prayer that Lord, whoever instigated, coordinated, authorized, and allowed it, it tides and manners to disappear. Not I've said a number of things here. Panagata mastermind. Panagata is instigate. Panagaso sign and authorize. Sanya Perwa. Sanya. Panaga authorize and then Dopa. Jado Kumir one Dopa. Dopa pass it a headless. I pray that the Lord cause restlessness. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Cause no peace now in the lives of these people until unless they repent. Yeah. And this is the kind of prayer that I want you to make right now. Yeah. Come on, let's just raise our hands to the Lord in Jesus' name. Talk a lies. Talk to God just like you would talk to Him. Marwanyacha, Musara Jesu Christo. I'll just 
doing a study, yema indexes, a happiness, indexes, a peace, etc. Zimbabwe, you know, sure, sure. And I want us to sing this song. Can I teach you the chairman of Matambu Ziko? But we sing that song with hope, fully knowing that one day I shall be able. Can I teach you the chairman of Matambu Ziko? Can I teach you the chairman of Matambu Ziko? God is going to transition this nation into a new era of economic prosperity. God will do it. He will transition this nation into a new era of political stability. He will transition this nation into a new era of justice and therefore peace. Demonstrations, you know, my freedoms, I'm release God's favor and expedition of this transition on the basis of the authority invested in the church. Father, we pray for. A new leadership, Lord, that is God fearing. A leadership, Lord, that is as should. But a leadership, my Father and my God, that is innocent of shedding blood. In the name of Jesus. No matter what we see, we will a Solomonic anointing of development in the transition from that all wave of chaos in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you so much. Um, that basically concludes the uh, the program for this morning. So I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for being here. Uh, we do have one thing that is following up from here, and that is that uh, a petition uh, is being read by Justina uh, following this. And uh, we invite those that want to stay to, to do that and, and hear that. Of course, it's uh, for those that are in the media also to ask questions and that sort of thing. So thank you for joining us for that. Uh, please do not forget your cards. Uh, these are important in, in order for us to see what we, we came together to, to see and to ask for. So please make sure that you sign uh, your own card there. And lastly, I have a set of keys. So if you were planning on getting out of here quickly uh, and they've fallen out of your pocket, uh, you won't be able to leave until you come see either myself or the staff at the back desk there. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you. Thanks.